What's up, everybody? Uh, so uh, doing a quick video today, and uh, we're going to learn how to multi-output route Superior Drummer 3 in uh, Studio One Pro version 6, right? So um, I've gone ahead and I've gotten a session open. I have uh, my instance of uh, Superior Drummer 3 open here, and you can see that it is just feeding out to a single track. When we multi-output route our drums, it gives us a greater degree of control, right? We can individually process things, we can bust things, we can route them in different ways than what we could just coming out of uh, the plugin on a single stereo pair of tracks, right? So uh, the first thing I'm going to do to multi-output route these in Studio One is here. I've got my instrument window open. Uh, up here, you'll see this little guy here, uh, outputs. We click on that. We can see uh, S1, S2. Click, hold, drag down, and you can see when I did that, a bunch of different tracks appeared down here. So I'm gonna hold Control Shift, I'm going to click the first track and then the last track. It's gonna select all these. I'm gonna click down here in the corner and I'm gonna color all of these blue. Uh, just because I like my drum tracks blue, you can make these whatever color you want them to be. So I'm gonna open my instrument back up here. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go over to Mixer. And here I will see all of the different outputs, all of the different tracks that I can output to uh, my DAW. So I'm going to show you the way that I route these. Uh, you can do this on as many or as few tracks as you feel like you need. This is just how I do it. Uh, so what I'll do is um, I'm going to send my kick to one and two. So I'll click here on the first kick track. I'll hold. I'll drag until I've got all of these kick tracks highlighted. Those are already set to out one and two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna grab S1, S2, I'm gonna name that kick. Then I will do the same thing for my snare. I'm gonna click, hold and drag until I've got all my snare tracks. I'm gonna send them to three and four, then I'm gonna rename three and four, snare. Then I will, I'm will. i gonna skip the hi-hat for now, tell you what to do with that here in a second. Uh, so I'm gonna go to Rack Tom, I'm gonna send that to five and six rack tom two is going to seven eight rack tom three will go to nine ten floor tom one will go to eleven twelve floor tom two will go to thirteen fourteen so then i'm going to come down here and i'm just going to institute i'm going to hit uh, i'm just going to name these uh t one through five because i've got five toms uh, one being the highest tom, five being the lowest tom. So T1, then I'll tab over T2, tab over T3, tab over T4, not 43, T4, then T5. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on hi-hat. I'm going to hold control. I'm going to click ride, and I'm going to overhead stereo. I usually don't use these overhead monos. Those are going to go to 15, 16. Then I'll come down here and name that symbol sum, because that's the sum of all my symbols. And then for this overhead mono, I'm going to mute that, drag it down. Overhead ribbon, I'm going to mute that, drag it down. Uh, I just, I don't usually use these. Um, overhead tube, same deal. Mute that, drag it down. Overhead drummer, mute that, drag it down. Ambience close is this one. Yeah, not all of these tracks are active at default. Uh, so, you know, I, I just I will typically just use the default uh, tracks that are available. Uh, occasionally, I'll, I'll build out some different stuff. But, you know, sound designing a drum kit is beyond the scope of this video. I just want to show you all how to route it. So uh, ambient close that is going to 1718. I'm going to call that room close. And then something that I like to do is I like to grab on this ambient far track, send it to 19 and 20. Um, and I like to, if you click here, it'll you'll see whether or not you've got things active. So for instance, if I go to ambience close, you can see that all these are active. Ambience far, none of them are active. So what I'll do here is uh, on the ambience far from superior drummer, I will enable the kick and I will enable all of the toms. And I will use this, uh, I'll slam this into a compressor and uh, I will kind of use that um, instead of a reverb in a lot of places. Uh, so, so I've got that one going out to 1920. I'm going to call that one shell verb. 
because I'm essentially using that as a uh, as a reverb for my snare and my toms. So you can see here, I've got these that I didn't use, uh, which is fine. You know, you can, if you want to send, you know, all, all of the, uh, kick mics, all the snare mics, all the over different overhead mics out to their own tracks. That's totally valid. Uh, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Uh, I just, I found that, you know, what I get by just routing it this way gives me what I need, uh, to do what I want to do and get the sounds that I want. Um, but now, um, I will just get rid of the tracks that I'm not using. You can see here, now that I've named these in the DAW, it carries over to what I see here. So I'll just click and I'll drag and get rid of all the ones that I'm not using. Uh, but now when I play this groove, You can see that everything is coming out on its own track, which that gives you much more uh, much more flexibility in how you process things uh, when you go to mix uh, in your DAW. So uh, after you have uh, configured this routing, you've got your multi out set up. Uh, if you want to save yourself some time the next time you sit down and you want to write some music, what you can do is you can actually come over here and you can click on this little this little guy right here. And that will give you the option to store preset or store in instrument plus effects preset. I like instrument plus effects preset because that will that will save all of your routing, right? So you store this instrument FX preset. I'm going to name that SD3. Prog Foundry routed. Because this is SD3 Prog Foundry and it's routed. So I'm going to save that. And now I can just remove track and instrument get rid of all these, then I can go over here to my browse window inside of Studio One. Uh, and you probably won't be able to see this because of where my mug's at, but um, I can actually show you up here. Uh, so if we go to Native Instruments, you can see if I click down on Contact, it gives you a drop, gives me a drop down menu. Uh, these are all my instrument effects presets, right? So I've, I, the one that I just saved um, for SD3 Prog Foundry routed. Now I can grab that from this browse menu, pull it over here. I can drop that in, and it will give me that virtual instrument with all the routing intact. You can see that when I play my groove, all the routing is preserved. So super handy if you want to stay, save some time in Studio One. Uh, one of my favorite things about Studio One is it just has a ton of features that are great to just dive into and make music. This is one of them. Uh, I've been using this as my main DAW since version four. So uh, ton of <laughs> ton of years in this one. Uh, it's great, um, and you know it's got a lot of cool uh, time saving features like that. So uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like and a subscribe. All that fun stuff. Uh, if you're ever looking for a mix engineer to help you get your tracks sound their best, uh, I am a mix engineer. Uh, check out my website, jasonbakermixing.com. I would love to help you out. Uh, you know, I've got a contact form on there. Hit me up. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll get you sounding good. Thanks for watching. Take care.